Hello there, Nick Davis here, and today we're going to be talking about Codex Imperial Guard. This is a uh, third edition uh, 40k, and this book's pretty much defined what the Imperial Guard would look like for the next 10 editions. In fact, if you look at the Cadians there and the Cadians in this box set here, they are pretty much the same, the same sort of deal. Yes, this is actually a Cadian Shock Troop, troop box set from the, from the latest edition. Ten fantastic looking Cadian toy soldiers, which I look forward to painting sometime, hopefully in the near future, should my schedule allow me to. Because I'm trying to get back into 40k, but basically comic books work. keeps bubbling up against that as well, so my free time is not as free as I'd like it to be. But I'm looking forward to getting a hold of this and looking inside and sort of painting this and getting back in the game. So early 95th combined rifles will come back. Yay! Anyway, we're here to talk about Colors Imperial Guards. You can see those are the Kenyan shock troops in the front there, painted, uh, painted in a fantastic illustration by Dave Gallinger. The, though the Kenyans were basically a, a, a faction force, they were also considered to be the more generic looking Imperial Guards, so they would move across a lot of the different type of forces. You can use them for a lot of things, and we try in this book to get that idea across. And this book also was uh, designed at the time that Adrian Wood, Wood had moved over to big game production from White Door, so he probably got some of his feelings in here as well. I'll do my best to basically pick out some names that I, I recognise, and we'll go forth from there. So, that's a lot of verbiage. Let's take a look in the book and see what it cuts loose, shall we? So, starting off, we have the inside cover here, starting off with some pictures of some fantastic armies. Let's make sure I get this nice and centred in here for you. First off, we have the uh, Kachuk and the Imperial Guard Army. You had a choice to basically uh, open the book with, but we had a lot of Kachuk and Plastics released at that time, and decided to build an army out of them. Lots of more armour uh, armor than I would have in a Kachuk force, because they, they are pure fight in the jungle type force, to my mind. Uh, but and I think a lot more armor than I probably would use in the Imperial Guard Force to be sh to, to be absolutely certain as well because I like lots of large guns though I do like the increase the use of the old greens there old greens are a particular favorite of mine. Here we go basically we've got some talons with a conqueror tank about to get <laughs> their butts handed to him by some uh, Eldor yeah those guys are vastly outnumbered there but luckily the Eldor brought a jet bike so the Imperial Guard might stand a chance. And finally, let's get centred right just here as well. We had the Valhalla army that was painted specifically for this. Um, this Imperial Guard Codex. I think they're used in a battle report as well. I think that's the Ultramar, Ultramar fighting against the Tyranids, and they're used as the Ultramar Defence Force. Three nice looking armies, but that being said, let's uh, turn off the page and see what it Let's make sure we get nice and centred so you can see the inside of this. The Codex Imperial Guard here. This is going to be a 50 page book. Um, it's priced at £8, £8 at the time, about $12 US. I uh, don't know how much the codexes are here at this moment in time. I haven't bought one yet, and I guess they're probably slightly north of $20 at a best guess. Let's just get you about the Imperial Guard. Brief history of some of the more known known residents, the Cadians, the Mordians, the Talons, Italian Wolf Riders, Catholic and Jungle Fighters, and the Valhalla and Ice Fighters. Why you should collect an Imperial Guard? If you like the Guard and lots of Luzguns, that's why you should collect them. I'm an Imperial Guard player, as you, well, you guys already know. Talks about the infantry army list and how basically build it. The Imperial Guard special guard special words about the command structures where it's always basically it's uh, ha huh, command platoons, infantry platoons, heavy weapons teams, commissars, commissars are separate are, are, are separately not attached to any, any command units, and everything bottoms down. All the platoons also have their own command unit in front as well. It's a very nice organised uh, uh, table of uh, organisation TRO. So yeah, I think it makes it interesting and very realistic for us in modern day times. More Imperial Guard uh, color, color text here and uh, to add, add to the world. And it's basically the Imperial Guard army. What we have is, well, it's bolt pistols for some reason. <laughs> Very rarely would I give a bolt pistol to anybody but the captain or, or commissar. No, it may not even that. Um, and then you would have basically the, you know, the, the stats. The wet range that the wet range weapons they could use the, and the vehicles. It's just a very nice sum summary of what's to, what's to be expected. Imperial Guard Warrior talking about some of the Warrior that you could have in the Imperial Guard Army. Yeah, you know, like you'd ever put a on armor on anybody but a commander, and even that you might not even do it. Refractor fields were probably a little bit more useful and cost a little bit less as well. So then we got basically Imperial Guard vehicles upgrades, which I don't think I ever actually used for any of my vehicles because it just didn't seem any point wasting the money. Uh, sorry, the money, I mean the points, to basically make it happen. Uh, the lot of games in 40k 3rd edition just didn't reflect the need the use of these items here, so that's what it was. A little bit more uh, colour text talking about basically going a APL guard uh, officer going to war. Then we have a fantastic piece by Alex Boyd here showing a, a, a very, very um, atmospheric Imperial Guard army. Unless Martarian Headhunter says basically is a... Uh, a 
pastiche of, of the Cadian set. Let's see if we can get this to the camera so we can take a look at it. I'm not sure I get this nice as finish. Yeah, that's basically a Cadian by any other name, right? Just a little bit more gum from his helmet there. So basically, that's why I said where the Cadians were like a. Um, were like a. a Force that you can use for basically the generics, that's what the KD is really good for. But like Ultramarines, so basically, we're designed to be the the, uh, the uh, generic Ultramarines, which you can basically build your own chapters on. Then we have the armor list, talking about command, the the command platoon. Now, my command platoons are always covered by, always ca captured by a colonel, because it's worth the, ex the extra 70 points just, just for the extra point, point of leadership. Uh, I would give these guys probably uh, bolt pistols and lance guns for the, that, that sort of thing. So basically, the strength of the Imperial Guard is always and always will be in the numbers of flashlights. You can point at enemy and turn on at the same time. Uh, any tank weapon squads were useful to basically put out to one side there as a, as basically to, on a hill to basically blast down anti tank stuff. Fire supports were very useful. Machine guns on either side are basically blast down, but I, and mortars. I never used mortars at all. Uh, just never did. Uh, Commissars, I used to have like two to three of them in my in each force because commissars are extremely useful in that area. Then we have elite troopers. I never wasted my time with elite troopers because uh, I didn't see any point to them. Um, if just basically a normal normal imperial guard. Again, strength. The strength of the imperial guard is numbers, 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 numbers. Elites are not pretty much not very useful to my mind in imperial guard because you just want to point those guns at the enemy and shoot. Uh, stone troopers were a fun, were a fun faction force if you could do a small skirmish skirmish thing, which is kind of fun. But my particular favour of all imperial guard. For elites, it's all greens. I love all green shock squads. They are absolutely amazing fun. Uh, you can basically you put them together. You know, I used to put them together in units of five and have them basically as a unit you know, will richly take go into the center of a of a enemy formation and just be a shock unit. It's, do its best to basically blitz that unit and get all the concentration of fire on them. You had two attacks. You had three wounds. They weren't particularly fast fighters, but they were very strong fighters. And they could make a mess of the front line and basically got the enemy's attention away from your, your primary troops so you basically you roll your firing lines into them. Uh, Ogrins are extremely useful troops. And the reason I kept I, I always loved the Ogrins is goes back to a story I read in White Dwarf 103 when he first published the Imperial Guard army list for Rogue Trader. And it had a captain and a colonel and a commissar in a shell hole trying to figure out how to deal with Elder Raiders. And the, uh, the colonel says we need something that can basically just kind captain says we need something that can, can knock them to the warp and back. And the colonel says let's use the old greens and we, so we use the old greens to basically run them in. We'll, bl we'll blow a hole in the hole in their unit just there and we use the old greens to run them in and then basically follow up with our, shot, our troops behind there. So it's, ever since then I've had a love of the old greens. I think the use of our humans in uh, Imperial Guard is very much on message with Imperial Guard. It's a shame we don't have beastmen anymore. We would love to see, keep that as a, as a faction in there as well. Rattling snipers. I try to make use of rattling snipers. I really like the really like the toy soldier at that time. Very ninety uh, fifth <laughs> wife was some sharp sharp. Uh, they were useful to basically if anything, they were very useful for drawing fire. People had a weird aversion to being get shot up by the snipers, and because you, you put them in squads of five, you just targeted one one character where you could and just shot the hell out of him until he fell over. So they were actually very good fire magnets. I know, not very expensive fire magnets, but if you put them in a front line, folk had a habit of shooting at them first before shooting at your Imperial Guard. I always say the strength of Imperial Guard is the infantry. The, le the more less casualties you can have in the Imperial Guard force, the uh, less problems you're going to have, basically, when it comes to nearly the third or fourth turn of your game. Uh, infantry platoon squads always have lots of infantry. Uh, I did experiment with Armored Fists, but to my mind, Imperial Guard never seemed to quite work well as an assault force. They were slow rolling tide or give ground for defense type unit, type army. Fast attacks, used, had a Hellhound model, used it once, got, it blew up and made a mess of absolutely everything, but it was fun to use. Sentinels, I'm, I started making use of near the end of my Imperial Guard because Sentinels were always a lot of fun for me to use. The sheer fact you had these guys running up a flank and just blazing away with their multi lasers made for a fun, fun moment with the Imperial Guard where people going, oh my god, the Imperial Guard are moving fast at me and assaulting. Uh, Rough Riders I've used in three games, um, never really had much success of them, uh, I just charged all out with the cavalry just to see what happened, and normally they got shot to pieces, but they were fun, and it was fun to basically move something a little bit faster around the thing. Uh, my games usually have two, usually have two Lehman Rosses in there, just with the battle cannons, and the hull-mounted uh, heavy bolter at five points, making it a 145-point uh, tank. 
Um, and they just basically were, they sat side by side as fire support at the back and just blew holes in the enemy line with their, their battle cannons. Never really advanced with them. They were basically pure, pure, unadulterated fire support. The battle cannons had that great big template about this big. Kaboom. Makes a huge mess. Blow the hole in the line. Send in the Ogwins to basically beat everybody up. That was pretty much my tactic. Uh, so I enjoyed those. Yeah, I enjoyed having Leaming Wusses. I had a set of Leaming Wusses, a squad of Leaming Wusses with the Sponsoons. And a squad of Leaming Wusses without the Sponsoons. And the squad without the Sponsoons did not have what we used the most in most of my games. And then we talk about the, the uh, Vanquisher. I think that's the one with the very long gun. Uh, never used it, so I can't have comp any, anything about that. Uh, the exterminator is the same way. It looked very interesting. It's very much if I'd use it, it would be an infantry support support to, to, um, vehicle. The Lumos to Mars shots one of the big Vindicator cannon on the front of it. Very good for knocking holes and things, but very expensive for basically something that you could do with a Lumos was anyway. Um, Basilisk. <laughs> I fielded the Basilisk a couple of times, and they always seemed to get took out in the first turn, so I never used them. And Griffin was a nice model to have because we didn't have the, the Basilisk at that time, and the the mortar was kind of fun to use. But I didn't really use mortars that much in my army anyway. But it was a nice nice little model to have in your force. Talk about some of the special characters, Lord Sol and Macarius, which basically is a fantastic Imperial Guard army, very much based on Alexander the Great in terms of basically his life story. Um, yes, yeah, back when the Imperial Guard were really, really basically were the core of the army and basically were sent out on crusades and the uh, Sol and Macarius uh, crusaders weren't was one of the biggest the Imperium ever had. Uh, Commissar Yak, we know Commissar Yak. I think he's going to come back actually very soon as a toy soldier, so it'd be nice to see what he looks like in this new generation. Big old lobster claw, we'll probably see him in the colour section in a few seconds to see what he looks like. Uh, nice little Commissar model, a uh, very powerful fighter uh, in terms of what he could do, uh, but also can be. Uh, <laughs> what is it, Iron Will stuff? You can ignore wounds, which is very useful. Nice Imperial Guard commander. Um, I didn't. I didn't ever get. I had the model, but never used them in a game. So I don't know how effective it was in the game. We used them in a um, like a, a tournament game where basically you have ultra power characters against ultra power characters. He kind of held his own, kind of. But you know, it's Yak, so it is what it is. Knock Dag Dog was a beautiful choice. All green bodyguard miniature, but I never used them in a game. Uh, but it was a nice orc, orc, all green. How did I say orc? All green bodyguard model. We have Connor Shaver's Last Chances. I'm coming up to a white dwarf, which I will be featuring in Last Chances, then, so we can have a better, better look and talk about these. I like the idea, this special squad that basically was, um, you know, had special missions to do. Very much, much more fun in, in a one off type scenario type game than over than basically using the battlefield, but still a nice character for a toy, uh, um, toy soldier set. Uh, what was it? Well, who was the hunter? There was a scope or Shiv? No, no, Shiv was somebody else. Um, they, they had a hunter guy in that, basically tracker, whatever his name would be. Uh, and I really like that toy soldier. I really wish we did an Imperial Guard army. It looked like, look like Australian bush soldiers. It was fantastic. There we have many, many, many little, little drawings of the types of Imperial Guard that are out there. And this is just a, a little field that gives some inspiration of what you could do in the future for your own Imperial Guard. You could base them around basically models for your Cadians. There's a Cadian just there. Uh, I think it's kind of really, really neat. I think the only thing, trick we miss is we never actually featured the old Imperial Guard toy soldier in here as a, as a unit type. And there's, so, but there's an audience there. That's kind of fun as well. And we turn over the page and see what cuts looks. Then we have basically the Chimera, so you must basically a nice schematic type where these are always fun to see. Uh, we have formation types here. Uh, well, when you type is basically this is a, another piece of colour. And then we basically go into another piece of colour talking about garrison types and that sort of thing and famous histories of Imperial Guard armies. So then, we talk, then we go into collecting and painting the Imperial Guard army. And yes, that's right. You're looking right at it. Let's see if we can get on the camera properly. Oh, oh, you know, no. There we go. That is my Imperial Guard army, uh, probably halfway through. Ooh, let's go back, oh, oh, back halfway through its uh, collection. Pretty much a regiment-sized army at that time. Uh, we're still missing three Lehman Wusses, a Armored Fist formation, and a, another two, three platoons of Imperial Guard and Stormtroopers. But that was my growing, crazily growing Imperial Guard army. And yes, the fortress back there was was scratch boot by me using Necromunda bulkheads and lots and lots of thick card. Actually, a fun thing to do. I think it's, it's it, I donated it to the studio when I came to the US. Got no idea if it's still in one piece. Kind of hoping it is, but you know maybe it's probably broken up into somewhere somewhere because it was what David said. A habit of stepping on it now and again and never telling me about it. Uh, let me turn the page over. 
And we're going to look at some of the uh, beautifully painted toy soldiers here, but infantry types in wonderful little, little scenes. One of the things we tried to do here, and some of my photography may be shown in here as well, we try to set scenes with our, with our commanders, so that's a nice little desert scene for the Talans. Captain's Country Gunfighters running through a, a bunker that's kind of nice as well. Uh, looking at the armour, different types of armour you can get, Rattling's doing a Rattling Sniper stuff, or wounds coming out of the, uh, the jungle there. And here is the article that probably caused a lot of trouble. Uh, the reason I'm going to say that is, uh, you do remember two or four weeks ago, I uh, <laughs> posted in support of girls in golden armour. Um, and basically I got leapt on by lots of people because how dare I basically say the law it ever changes, it changes and should be seen as, uh, as unreliable because it's based on fragments and historical data and that kind of thing that always was not quite right. And I put this article as this page, a picture of this article as underneath that uh, post supporting basically, hey, it's okay to have girls and golden armor, and I'm okay with you know, all the other uh, uh, diversity in the game. And it, a huge flood blew up, blew up, absolutely blew up. In fact, it's the reason why I have almost uh, 1,500 new followers on my Twitter account. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's crazy. Uh, so basically, here is an article I was supposed to write in the article about the Imperial Guard Army, um, so, and I put together an Imperial Guard Army. These are my guard. In the uh, in this codex, that's right. I got my army into a codex, and how good does that make me feel? Very good indeed. I can tell you, very, very, very good indeed. And um, and basically, because a small army fist, so it has to be bringing some extra army. So I've got two army fist squads in there. Uh, heavy platoons, as you can see, commissar, lead, commissar in the command section of each platoon, commissar in the command section for the command squad. Uh, my, I had one fire support, one heavy weapons, one uh, heavy uh, anti-tank squad. Uh, my, I tried to basically keep my weapons the same in my fire support in my fire support squads because basically the, the thought of always heavy bolters basically acting like big old Bren machine, big old um, uh, Vickers machine guns was absolutely fantastic to me. And I love the fact that basically they could lay down so much support fire. There's my old greens, which are always, always, and shall be a favourite of my Imperial Guard, and I'm going to look forward when I finally get to my old green models in my own Imperial, new Imperial Guard army because old greens kick the butt. Rattling's down there. There's the tanks I was talking about. There were basically um, just the battle cannons. That hundred killer put in there as a model variation, and I every time I fired a hundred killer, I always missed. So I can never tell you how effective they were, but that's just me. Here's some ta talking about Imperial Guard tactics and then what you should do here: uh, attack formations, defense formations. Uh, attacking always a rolling tide uh, defencing is basically a rolling tide but going backwards uh, always give uh, give ground ground for time with Imperial Guard always basically go forward firing as you go do not ever get into a close assault situation with Imperial Guard unless you have all greens backing you up as a power squad and for counter attacking because you will get your book kicked every single time unless you're playing up against the fellow Imperial Guard player and he will basically just, um, <laughs> he'll be slugging it out, human and human. Anyway, quick look at this stuff up here, see if we can get this right there. So that is a, that's right, you've seen that right, that is a chainsaw warrior leading my command squad there. Um, nice little flag there. Then we have my fire support squads, and see if it gets across, see a bit more, there we go. Fire support squads there. Then you have oh, my platoons there as well, armoured fists, there we go. My Ogrins, I love my Ogrins. Every, every single game I used Ogrins, so fantastic. There's my little Rattlings, or like, I used to like call them fire, fire Magnets. And there were my fire, there were basically my battle, my two tank support units there. Basically, I used them as infantry support, blow battle cannons, blew holes in lines, while the Ogrins knocked, knocked, the, knocked, knocked, knocked the holes out of them. And then basically, my Imperial God either stood the ground or advanced firing. Imperial Guard uniforms, Kaz Conjunga fighters, and variations of Ice Wallers, variations of as well. Modern Iron Guard variations of, of uniforms and Cadian Shock Troops, the same sort of way. Uh, camel patterns showing what you can do if you really want to go crazy. I'm never really sure how to paint the camel patterns, there's actually a special technique to doing this. Um, you should look up some World War II historical camo uh, videos to basically see how you can paint camo. It's done in a really abstract way, and I think it works really, really well. Uh, Desert camouflage for the Talon, Talon Raiders there. Organizations and markings. How to basically organize, organize your, your units and, and mark them up. I always went with the round badge sim symbolization because that's Imperial Guard to me. That's been Imperial Guard ever since uh, the f I read about them in the first edition of uh, 40K. Painting infantry and camouflage, making your toy soldiers look pretty. 
painting tanks and vehicles, this is a really cool way of doing it. Um, this is a good way of showing different types of camel type as well. This is really, really nice. N nice units here. Uh, personalization your army with basically conversions. I really did try to get my, my, my chainsaw warrior into here, but nobody will have it because it's too, 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 <laughs> too old. A lot of fun, I used the Mordian head on top of a rattling sniper there. That's fun there. Mordian head on top of a commissar to make sort of a different captain model. Also here, it's using Necromander gang Gangers as as imperial god army types this is really good i think the um oh my gosh uh blah 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 blah, blah. Oh, the name the words of the the guard is, the uh, gang name has gone for me completely but these make very good these gangs make very good alternative imperial guard as, as well um nice uh, tank conversion down there as well like a tazarin guard this is scenery made out of foam core on top of a very heavily grayed out form this is actually a nice little field to play on the tazarin guard army who painted these um these were painted by by warwick yes right but this is warwick's imperial guard i actually had once said don't he was taking for some of his netting he took netting out the uh the first aid cabinet and i said no you can't do that mate I mean, I had a weird conversation about it. I think I really upset him when I did that, but I didn't mean to. Uh, but it's nice, nice city fire timing there, showing what you can do with an Imperial Guard army here. This is not a, a he doesn't particularly call it a Cadian army because he's mix, mixing up Mordian toy soldiers in here as well. So it's a nice mix of army forces to make you a nice, unique army. Uh, showcasing some of the toy soldiers out there from various people around the uh, world have some fantastic Imperial Guard armies. Um, again, I tried to get myself in here, but I didn't get. I didn't actually get that, ha that to happen. Uh, I tried so hard. But some variations by Fred's wonderful, wonderful fire support climbing over there. Look at that twin last cannons. Oh my gosh, how insane is that? Look at that hydro battery. Good lord. Uh, finishing off with some more Imperial Guard stuff going here, some of the, um, you know, look at these toy soldiers type thing. I actually like the, uh, the camo scheme on these Cadians just here. I might actually use that in my new, new 40k army, but we shall see. Um, and just some nice little pictures to finish off there. The talking, looking at the Conquest of Macarius just there. And that is Codex Imperial Guard. So there we go. That is my first walkthrough of a Codex Imperial Guard. Uh, Adrian had his thumbs in this whole place. Uh, a lot of the uh, the reason the color sections and how two sections got so good is because Adrian was working on those. Uh, lots of fun pictures in there and color stuff going on in there as well. I got to have my Imperial Guard army in a, in a Codex. It's how cool is that to have my own ar have my army in a Codex? A fantastic piece of history there. And that, my friends, is that. Um, I'd like to thank you for coming along this little ramble down uh, memory lane with Codex Imperial Guard from 3rd uh, edition. Um, if you like what you see, please like, hit the share, like stuff buttons all around here. Check out other videos. If you want to support me in my endeavours and what I'm trying to do with cartooning and with my Imperial Guard stuff, please click the link below for my Patreon. And I, it means me to say for you guys to have a fantastic day. And I will see you again for a White Dwarf retrospective or another look down the memory lane at another gaming item. We shall see what happens. You take care now, my friends. Bye-bye-bye.